What was it like, right, when you were a kid, being brought up in Nor being brought up in Norway? What what were you listening to? What was around at that point? Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. It was. I mean, the radio we played maybe one hour a week pop yeah. music. There was mainly one radio station uh, yeah. when we grew up, so um, there wasn't a lot of. There wasn't this kind of huge menu of different uh, styles to, yeah. to kind of uh, that that would bombard you. I was very interested in 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 other things. You know, I, I was uh, I was into insects, butterflies, and things. So I was I was turning the rocks and stones that I could find to see what yeah. was yeah. what was underneath. You know, <laughs> so th that's really what occupied. Uh, you know, all my all my time and my imagination. I used to go to a record store and just kind of look at the cover and just imagine what the music would be. So yeah. you would say, "Can I listen to this?" And you would stand right. there for half a day and try to get right. some. Wow. Know, so records were extremely important. You went uh, and you discovered new groups, and you really kind of um, uh, had to cultivate uh, your own. On taste, you know, you really had to look for it. The, f the first music that I ever heard, and remember, I, I, at that point, I, I, uh, I know, I know nothing at yeah, all. Yeah. I, I know the, the piano, like and the, I, you know, I don't listen to the radio or anything. You know? yeah, yeah. And then, um, excellent. It's going to be really embarrassing. A, isn't it? a cousin of mine, <laughs> a cousin of mine, has been to England, and he comes back don't with an album. Don't blame it on us. And then he, c he comes back with an album uh, by Uriah Heep. This is in 70... Fantastic. 74, I think. Yeah, brilliant. And it knocks me completely out, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the first record I really listened to was their kind of Bird Back Rack. So, right. you know. Yeah. And then, um, I mean, Henrik's was also one of the first albums that I bought. So right, yeah. Steppenwolf and Henrik's. And yeah. So I kind of got the 60s a little later. Yeah. Um, the first that I um, remember very clearly was a, was a, a purple Jimi Hendrix kind of compilation right. record. Wow. Uh, God. That was like that was like music kind of opened up then yeah. and, and became yeah. a right. complete obsession. I I decided to to make a band. Yeah. And I, at that point, I, wow. I don't know there are any other bands in in, the, in Norway, and I, yeah. I and I was thinking to myself that it's it's strange. I mean, this is so exciting. Yeah. Uh, how come no one's ever thought of doing this in in Norway? Yeah. You know, yeah, of, course. <laughs> of course, there were hundreds of bands just outside my door. Yeah. How young were you when you thought, "No, I'm going to get in a band. I'm going to make I'm going to make it as a career, or going to just um, see if I can do it." Yeah, I don't know. It just the the writing always came sort of easy. Yeah. to me, you know, it was really, um, I, I met the sort of local rival band down the road and it was only when I met them that I realised I wrote songs too, you right, know, so right. it was kind of like, oh, is that what it's called type of yeah. thing, you know, so yeah. I really early got into that and lyrics and stuff like that. And How long have you known Paul for? Uh, since, um, since we were 12 and 11, I think. Right, wow, and that's just, so it's like school schoolmate yeah well we were different uh, levels in school but um, we, we used to live very very close to each other he was basically a neighbor he just lived like two three houses down yeah so he had his own band I had a, my own band I played drums at that time Paul's father has made him a drum had made him a drum kit of, uh, of uh, cardboard boxes <laughs> excellent and uh, and he was holding like this impromptu <laughs> concert on the balcony and uh, and I was like looking at was I was like wow this is so great I gotta you know I gotta talk to these guys and I, um, so I explained I had I had a grandfather I had a bass amp and I had a guitar wow. so in, when you had that you were immediately wanted you know um. yeah. he played guitar and you know we went through like fifty different typical lineups you know yeah, trying yeah. different angles we've all been there yeah, yeah. <laughs> I went to bass Not and I started like keyboard and yeah. And that's kind of like, uh, in a way, a very big uh, sort of, uh, it sort of guided our career, I think, because we didn't become sort of um, these sort of technical players. Right. We learned to play a lot of instruments, right. sort of yeah. half good. Right. And so we got into the whole 60s thing. Paul and yeah. I got into the whole, 
you know, starting with the Beatles and then moving on to more hardcore stuff like uh, Jimmy and Janice and, and uh, mm. The Doors finally kind of landing yeah. there. And, and that was a huge influence uh, yeah. throughout our many, many different bands. Right. With um, names kind of uh, wandering in towards, I mean, one band, the, the kind of most, the longest running band we had was called Bridges. And, yeah, uh, yeah. It's not so far off. Yeah. <laughs> I believe I was about 20, really? I think, I, or 19. I heard them. I heard them play for the first time, yeah. uh, and that was a turning point for me because at that point I'd been going in at different groups and uh, and I had there was nothing in me that s thought that there would be anything to come out of Norway. I read somewhere that um, Morton said, um, great band, but you need a singer. Was that true? Depends where you want to take it, you know. Oh, right, no, I don't mean, well, whether it's negative or positive, but mm. like, if some, whatever it meant, if someone come up to me and said that, I'd be right. like, oh, it's fucking <laughs> good for sure. But yeah, you, did you know him anyway before that? Um, I didn't really know him. He was sort of, I think Max knew him more than right. I did. Yeah. yeah. He was very into kind of like Queen and right. and that type of stuff, which was not yeah. my bag. Yeah, yeah. I saw, yeah. you know, <laughs> what it what it took in a way, and yeah. I knew that this is of international uh, standard yeah. or stature yeah. or whatever. Wow. And I also knew that they needed me to to, to sing, you know. Destiny. But uh, <laughs> but I didn't I didn't say anything, and no. it was to take another two years I think you know but we we had that kind of uh, very early on set that we're going to go to England right. and sort of try to really yeah. do something we met Morton about a year before we left and he was studying at the time so we just kind of uh, we couldn't we couldn't really wait for him yeah. Um, yeah. so we left and tried it on our own yeah we were not seeking each other for for the musical abilities, but for the for the spirit in a way, right, for the right. the for meeting what, of the mind, for what you're after yeah. in a sense, what you're going after, the yeah. the focus or uh, yeah. yeah. There was something yeah. about that Morton guy. There was something yeah. that was clicking there. Yeah. Maybe we should go back to Norway just for like a couple of weeks and try a couple yeah. of demos out, and uh, that's what happened. So, how long were you together as a heart before like a crazy single came out and it all went what? That crazy, Ooh. that crazy single was the first thing that I ever heard them play. Uh, well, the take on me. The the riff from Take on Me. Right. And what was that called before they was going to call it? Call it was Doodle called Lewis. Lesson One for a while. Oh, was it? Yeah. <laughs> Love it. We couldn't quite, not quite the same ring, really, is it? But we didn't. Uh, no, we chose an. Uh, uh, we we didn't like the title. Yeah. And it wasn't really. It was like a working title, so we went for a much worse yeah. title. Yeah, which was that? <laughs> Take on me. Oh, right, no, no, no. <laughs> Tell me what, because I can't, I can't, I just cannot fathom what it must have been like to like, so you formed the band and everything, and then mm. you have, you know, Take on me, is, and then suddenly f overnight almost, mm. that you, it just goes bang, and you, success, America, England. I mean, yeah. how do you cope with that? You're so happy because uh, at that point, there's like two years of people telling you, you'll get so busy that you'll go crazy and you're just so yeah. bored and you just want to get so going, yeah. yeah. So you're like, yeah. you've heard it so much, you don't really believe it anymore, yeah. you know. Yeah, so right. when it finally happens, it's not like, you don't really get tired after the first 10 months. Then you start to say, whoa, this is getting too, too much, right. too yeah. much at the same time, you know. I mean, after like a few of those Japanese, you know, interviews from 10 in the morning to 10 in the evening, half yeah, an hour, half yeah, an hour, half yeah, an hour, half yeah, an hour. Yeah, when you're But I mean, like we, we were so young at that point that we could really, uh, we could go for a long time without yeah. getting, you know. Yeah. But it sort of struck you when you got a Grammy nomination and you right. went to that kind of thing and it was yeah. like, yeah. you look on the other people and they're so nervous for you that you start to get nervous yourself, you know. <laughs> it's like, oh shit, yeah, they're yeah. freaking out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know if I did cope with it. I mean, yeah. I. I pretended I was coping with it and yeah. uh, kept the act going for a long time but yeah. eventually it was kind inside of broke. going oh. yeah it was kind of panicky yeah. <clears throat> for uh, for a long time I think most of the stuff that happened uh, since the breakup of the band 
was due to the fact that you were still kind of suffering the shock waves of the first round. All of a sudden, you, your whole life is evolved around a security guard, you know, and he he's looking after you, and he ends up brushing your teeth in the end. But, you, know, you, yeah. you go in and out of airports and, and hotels, and you uh, very quickly you stop using the lobby, the main entrance. You just yeah. go through the back doors of everything. Yeah. Uh, and there, there's, no, there's no time really to, oh. to digest things and, and, uh, and to find out whether you're doing the right thing even. Right. So, so, you know, but so we start to, after, after six months of this, we are uh, it really s starting to, to wear. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> and we're not happy about what we're doing because it's, yeah. it's about nothing. The whole yeah. thing, you know. So that, that in the end hit us very hard. How, what do you mean? What, what, how long in did that hit you hard? Uh, at after that point, well, after six, six months, months, we were right. really completely exhausted and yeah. drained and fed up yeah. with doing nothing. Yeah. We were not being a band. Right. We were not really, you know, we were just not popping creating, around. We, no. And not, no outlet, you know. Yeah. No, nothing. So All you do is, is pose for pictures or, or yeah. not pose or whatever, whichever. What's the sort of weirdest small place like? I can imagine you turning up in I the middle of Alice Springs. Lebanon Spring. was up Lebanon, there. Really? Yeah. Wow! Well, that must have been. That was uh, in Beirut, and um, I think they've built up a lot of that stuff now. But it was yeah. totally shot to bits. Bullet you know? holes everywhere. Yeah. yeah. And uh, was you that... know, your hotel room had like sprays of bullet yeah. holes. And I remember on stage, and you know, um. Mags was standing uh, over here, and above him was a big hole filled in with concrete, which was a grenade hole. And they weren't quite sure whether that was going to come out with all the sounds yeah, starting to. Yeah, you know. yeah, you so he kind of moved back like ten pieces <laughs> on that stage. He was like, oh, "Where did he go?" We changed something as well in Norway. We changed. I don't know. Um, maybe it would have changed without us too, but I think. Right. Uh, with us, the kind of excuse disappeared a little bit that you couldn't make it as a Norwegian act. And, uh, right, right. and then all of a sudden, everybody who had a record contract was going to be the biggest thing, thing since sliced bread. And, right, and of yeah, course, that yeah. didn't happen either. So I think, yeah. but there was definitely an attitude change through the 80s. Yeah. Uh, I imagine that it must, it must be a freak out and hard to deal with, with um, like friends and family. Because obviously they've known you as a kid, and to mm. you, you're just like, oh, Johnny Blocks around the corner, who's right. in a bit of a band, and suddenly, mm. there you are. How was that? That must have been quite hard, no? Yeah, because they probably change more than we do, yeah. you know. So, um, and you, you find that a little bit embarrassing because you don't feel that different. Cool. It's obviously cool with uh, success and stuff like that, but. Um, but it looks obviously much more glamorous, much more everything from the outside, you yeah, know. So yeah. you try to, being Norwegian, yeah. you try to kind of go <laughs> to yeah. tone it down. But yeah. I mean, looking back, we did a lot of uh, sort of very few bands get to be a part of, you know. There was a success there that was rare yeah. in this business. So, yeah. What was touring like? <clears throat> I, mean, I mean, especially in those first years, that must have been, was it? Like that mad rock and roll stories that people talk about. Like, was that the same for Aha as well? Um, not really. We uh, we we. Um, I remember we had a press conference in uh, in Piccadilly just before we went on the world tour, and uh, I remember looking out and there was this crowd of people blocking all of uh, uh, all of Piccadilly Circus and. Uh, and of course, the English policeman with a very kind of, uh, you know, um, characteristic uniforms. Yeah. And I remember thinking for one split second, "Wow, this really happened you yeah. know, in a strange way." Um, yeah. But uh, from then on, us touring kind of was—I uh, don't know—I I, never—I never really allow myself to be. Uh, uh, I was kind of too enclosed when I when we were touring in the first rounds. I wasn't I wasn't really digging it, you know. I, I, right. I had too much kind of uh, things that I wanted to have different, or I wasn't happy with my own performances or right. with the band's status. There were so many things that you worried about that's yeah. changed now. Now it's more like you you really want to you appreciate the how much fun it can be, and you really right. want it to be 
the best it can be, and uh, you feel more relaxed, more self-assured, and I think that, yeah. you know, that sort of uh, uh, makes it easier on the audience too. Yeah. And, and to begin with, we were relying on sequences and, and uh, a lot of things like that. Mm. And, we, you know, I don't even know what we sounded like because yeah. we were uh, yeah. probably horrible. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever forgot your words on stage to a song? Have you ever gone, oh, Ever? On. I, always. Do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and how, how do you buffle out right of it? The best thing is to fall asleep right away when you go on stage because then you do it instinctively. The moment you wake up is the dangerous part you know right so when you no, I, i'm kind of kidding but it's like it's what happens you, you you invariably you end up on autopilot when you've toured for a while yeah of course and it's when you wake up it you sort of yes, pull yourself yeah. out of those that's when you're whoops where yeah. am i you know <laughs> yeah. it's a it's a strange thing because it doesn't mean that you're you're not it doesn't mean you're not there but you're there in a yeah. in a kind of in a different room yeah. somehow we adapted very quickly to the yeah. kind of status that we were given. Uh, I moved back to Norway in '92, and I guess it was to try to find the um, <coughs> the country that I had left behind. Uh, yeah. More than uh, I, don't, I don't know that it. <coughs> I'm sure things people changed uh, drastically, but I, I I sort of spent a few years trying to hang out with the same people that before I left and try to kind of be very insular about my yeah, life. Uh, but in the end, you know, you just kind of have to, you have to, to a certain degree, just accept that things are different and just get yeah. on with it. It's, yeah. not, it's not such a big deal. Yeah. So then obviously came a little break and you all sort of went your separate ways and done your own little thing. Was, how did that break? Was that sort of little, I don't like you? Or was it just like, it just felt it was time to like move along? Uh, I think the um, the um, our last album uh, in in '92, we were going. We were kind of we didn't want to just do singles anymore. We wanted to make like a more of an album. Yeah. Get into more of a playing. I think we kind of sensed that the '90s were coming. You know, we wanted yeah. to get down, get away all the reverb and all the sort of uh, you yeah. know just just to kind of simplify. Yeah. You know? And that uh, is a hard one to to change that much in the climate. You know, it's yeah. hard to bring all your fans with you. Yes. Yeah. And um, yeah, well, I and I think for me, I, I was totally happy with that. But I think Aha is sort of based around having a certain amount of success. You know, that's how we started, and yeah. I think it's hard for us to kind of to go that route. Yeah. So um, personally, I like that route. One of the reasons that we could come back today with uh, our head, you know, head up high, is the fact that a lot of our peers recognized that we worked as a very serious band, it was very yeah, serious yeah. about what we did, and that the status that we had in the first round was kind of due to the massive impact we had uh, when we first came out. Yeah. Um, and it sort of stuck with us for a long time. So what happened when someone, what was the feelings when someone approached you about the Nobel Peace Festival? We, was it like, oh, that's going to be a bit spooky? Well, they did that like two, three years in a row. Oh, right. <laughs> so oh, right. it was like, so they keep reeling you yeah, in. So in the end, it was like kind of embarrassing to say no. Right. And, uh, oh, right. But it was kind of like, what are we going to play? That was yeah. the main thing. We can't come on and play an old song. Right. Yeah. And you don't want to just do like some stuff that we had lying around. Yeah. So, you know, it would, wouldn't be nice to do something that was kind of written for that night. Right. So I was very happy to come up with that song. The right. you know, summer moved on, and yeah. I was very skeptical. Yeah. Simply because I, I really liked my own time, you know, and I, yeah. I enjoyed doing what I was doing. Yeah. I recorded an album in '95, yeah. which uh, has done a lot of good for me, and uh, it's when I started writing songs. Uh, on my own and uh, it's really wh what I want to do it's where I'm going and uh, for me to go back into the aha thing was mm. was like Step many back. many steps you know backtracking or whatever but I, I think we were really aware of that this could be sort of turned to overload very fast 
So we yeah, really yeah. wanted to sneak so, in. So we kept telling each other, oh, okay, we just do this. Yeah. Well, maybe one more, you know, that kind of yeah. have another, yeah. you know. So it was a very sort of gentle, just touch, tasting yeah. it a little bit. But, I, you know, we were all kind of hesitant, you know. Yeah, no. <laughs> but at that, they but, said that it was like, yeah. it's quite weird. Yeah, it was. Because everyone says the same thing. It's like, you know, it was yeah. like, no, but then it seemed to drift, and it actually. But what happened was, what ha like, when well. I heard when I heard those demos? When I heard about five or six songs, yeah. then that really changed because that was the spirit of of the band that I knew yeah. once, you know. So it had reawakened itself. Uh, th uh, you know, then I, I really got into trouble because <laughs> because uh, I was very confident and very strong about what I want to do myself. Yeah, you know? yeah. But at the same time, I knew I knew that um, that this meant something too, and uh, right, yeah. and I felt you know I felt that I had to that, that it was right of me to pursue it and yeah. at least take a closer look. Yeah. Um, and only after seven years now did we feel that there was a point to to try and collaborate together again and yeah. see. Because now there's enough time gone by so you can look back and say, oh, it wasn't, you know, yeah, there was yeah. some great stuff on all the records and some shit stuff on all the records. And we can just kind of celebrate it more yeah. than be um, desperately seeking uh, to leave things behind us all the time. Yeah. Last question. Mm. When you look back at them photos from the 80s, laugh <laughs> or cry? It's uh, laughter that turns into crying. <laughs> <laughs> Say no more. Oh, brilliant. Thanks a lot. Cheers for that.